An important part of analyzing a company for a potential investment is understanding their past, current and potential future financial situation. Unfortunately, a lot of investors skip past this part and focus just on the products and services the company offers and whether they feel that they have a good future or not. And we're not even talking about Wall Street bets, YOLO type investors either. We're talking about everyday investors who take unnecessary risks by not looking into the financial health of the companies they're investing in. The most common reason for this is that they don't understand the financial statements. And that's quite understandable because they're full of numbers, strangely worded items, and can seem a bit confusing or complicated. But in reality, they really aren't so complicated at all and are nothing to be afraid of. In fact, once you know the basics, it can actually be quite interesting to dive into the financial statements of a company and analyze how the company's being run and any potential opportunities or threats that there may be. There are a number of different ways to analyze the financial statements, but before you get to that stage, you need to know how to read them so you know what it is that you're looking at. In this video, we'll go through the basics of a financial statement and explain the key sections so you can see how straightforward it really is. Now, as I'm sure you can see from the length of this video, we're not going to go into detail about absolutely everything, but we're just going to go through the main sections so you can get a good understanding. And in any case, most of the items, once you understand how these statements work, are pretty self-explanatory. They're actually labeled and you can figure out what it is that they're showing you. As an example for this video, we'll be looking at the latest quarterly results from Tesla. Now it's important to note that financial statements may differ slightly depending on the company or the industry or the country they report in. However, for US listed companies like Tesla, the financial statements would be included in the 10K and 10Q filings, which are mandatory for all publicly traded companies in the US by the SEC. The 10K is an annual statement and the 10Q is quarterly. The 10K will provide more information about the company and it is audited, so the information you see in it will be more dependable and more accurate. But let's take a look at what Tesla provided in its most recent report, which was for the first quarter of 2020. The financial statements of a company are usually made up of three main statements. We have the balance sheet, the income statement, and the cash flow statement. The balance sheet is typically the first statement to appear and it gives a snapshot of the company's assets, liabilities and shareholders' equity at a specific point in time. These three aspects make up what is known as the balance sheet equation, also known as the accounting equation. This states that assets are equal to liabilities and equity. The balance sheet is split into five sections current assets, non-current assets, also known as long-term assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities, also known as long-term liabilities, and equity, which is also known as shareholders' equity or shareholders' funds. Let's start by looking at the assets. These will be listed in order of how liquid they are, which means how easily they can be changed or converted into cash. So, current assets are assets that are expected to be either used or sold within the next year. This will include things such as cash, cash equivalents, money owed by customers, inventory, and goods and services that have been paid for but not yet used. The non-current assets are assets that are not expected to be sold or used within the next year. Tesla includes things such as lease vehicles and solar energy systems, but there are also more common items also listed, such as property, plant and equipment, along with leases, intangible, in other words, non-physical assets, and goodwill. The next section shows the liabilities. Again, we have current liabilities, which are the obligations that are due within the next year. And this includes things like money owed to suppliers, even money that has been paid but the good or service is yet to be delivered, along with the portion of long-term debt that's due to be repaid this year. Then we have the non-current liabilities, which are obviously 
obligations that are not due within the next year. This includes long-term debt and again money that's received but the good or service has not yet been delivered. The last section is equity which is often referred to as shareholders equity or shareholders funds. You could think of this as being whatever would be left over for shareholders if all assets were liquidated and all liabilities were paid off. Therefore, if the figure is positive, it means the company has enough assets to cover its liabilities. And if it's negative, it means that it doesn't. Shareholders equity will include information about shares that were issued, any capital paid in by shareholders paying for shares in the company, and retained earnings, which is money accumulated from the company's earnings and kept in the company. The next financial statement is the income statement. This is also known by other names, including statement of operations and profit and loss statement, amongst many others. This statement is going to show us the earnings and expenses of a company over a specific period of time. This is important to keep in mind. The balance sheet was a snapshot at a particular point in time, whereas the income statement is looking at what happened over a specific period of time. So the income statement is helping us to see a company's financial performance for that period. Companies will structure the income statement differently, but listed companies like Tesla will typically follow what we refer to as a multi-step income statement, which separates the operating revenue and expenses from those coming from non-operating activity. So we're looking at gross profit, operating income or loss, the income or loss before taxes, and then the income or loss after taxes. To get to the gross profit, we typically look at total revenue minus the cost of that revenue. So traditionally here you'll have sales revenue and in the costs you may have heard of the term cost of goods sold. So this gives us the gross profit. We can then look at operating expenses, things like research and development for creating new products, selling general and administrative expenses, which are all the costs not directly involved in production of a product or service, but needed for the day-to-day -day business operations. This will include things such as rent, salaries for executives and other management expenses, admin staff, and basically any non-sales people. So ultimately, we end up with our income or loss from operations. We can then look at any interest paid or received to find our income or loss before taxes. And then finally, the income or loss after taxes. The third of the three major parts of a financial statement is the cash flow statement. So the income statement that we just looked at may show us the profit or loss generated during a period, but that doesn't necessarily equal cash. A company will need cash to survive, so the cash flow statement is going to help us by giving information about a company's liquidity and solvency. Solvency means having enough funds or liquid assets to make necessary debt payments and fund the company's operations. If the company runs out of cash, it could be insolvent, which is one of the main reasons for businesses failing. The cash flow statement will tell us the amount of cash or cash equivalents coming into the company or leaving the company, therefore showing us how much cash is on hand for a company to make its necessary payments. The cash flow statement is usually split into three main sections. Cash from operations, cash from investing activities, and cash from financing activities. The first section shows us the cash flow from the primary revenue generating activities of a company. So this includes the company's products or services, things like cash from sales, rent payments, salary payments, and so on. Cash flows from current assets and current liabilities. Next are the cash flows from investing activities. The focus here is on acquiring or getting rid of long-term assets. This will show us outflows due to investments made in things like property and inflows when assets are sold. However, this statement doesn't detail the investments and so the quality of those investments can't really be assessed. 
And finally, we have the cash flow from financing activities, which shows us cash coming in or going out due to any equity capital or borrowings. It tracks cash flow between the company, its owners, creditors and lenders, including stockholders. So there you have it. Simple, wasn't it? Those are the main sections of the three main statements that make up a company's financial statements. The balance sheet, the income statement, and the cash flow statement. Now, we didn't go into lots and lots of detail. This was a high-level overview, but just by understanding those main sections and how the statements are laid out and how they relate to each other and the jobs that they do, you can already get a good grasp of what's going on in the company and you should now be able to read a company's financial statement and understand what you're seeing. I'd recommend downloading the financial statements of companies from different industries and seeing how they differ from one another and whether you can read them now and get a better understanding of what's going on in those specific companies. And if you like this video and want to see more on this topic, such as how we can take this a step further and use ratios to analyze the financial statements, then hit that thumbs up button to let us know. And if you're looking for something to watch next, why not check out our Legends of Investing video about the story of Warren Buffett, someone who reads more financial statements than practically anyone. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos and thanks so much for watching. See you soon.